Good evening, everybody. We hope that all is well. Uh, we're going to get started in the, with this in a, in a little bit. Um, we're in the process of just letting more people join uh, so that they can get the uh, full advantage of this. There we go. Good evening, my name is Ben Jackson. We'd like to welcome you to our webinar series. Our webinars are brought to you by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation and the Kappa Foundation. Our webinar this evening is about social media and news reporting. This evening, our presenters are John Marshall Jones and Eric Conyer. John Marshall Jones is best known for his role as Floyd Henderson, the loving father from the 90s hit show, Smart Guy. John Marshall Jones has worked with such stars as Oscar winner Sean Penn, Helen Hunt, Jamie Foxx, Forrest Whitaker, Robin Williams, and Steve Martin. He has recently appeared on Big Little Lies, The Morning Show, Grand Hotel, Grace and Frankie, Bosch, Shooter, In the Cut, 911, SWAT, The Fosters, Criminal Minds, uh, Rectify, yeah. Bone, uh, NCIS, The Mentalist, Shameless, Glee, Pretty Little Liars, and the upcoming feature films, The Children, Rust Creek, and Into the Dark. Welcome, John. I'll give you half as much to read next time, I promise. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, Mr. Eric Conner. Mr. Eric Conner is the Chief of Public Affairs for the United States Army Reserve based in Los Angeles, where he oversees media and community, community relations, which includes serving as a spokesman for local, regional, and national news events involving the Army Reserve and coordinating events, sporting, educational, and other events relating to promoting the military and government. Prior to serving in this position, Eric served as the executive producer, producer, reporter, anchor, and editor at numerous television news stations to include the ABC affiliate in Atlanta, Georgia, and NBC affiliate in Knoxville, Tennessee. During his 17-year television news career, he garnered many television news awards, including Associated Press Awards for Best Newscaster and Spot News Coverage. Eric loves giving back to his community in various ways, but enjoys giving back most by leading, guiding, and mentoring male youths. Welcome, Mr. Connor. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me? We can hear you. So okay. now we're going to we're going to turn the uh, presentation over uh, to uh, Brother Jones. And Brother Jones, you should be able to see that your screen is going to come up. Uh, while that's going, we're going to launch the first poll that said that asks, "What social media platforms do you use?" So this way, the uh, please answer the poll. Um, all please note that uh, there is a question box. If you have a question, just type it in the question box, and we will uh, respond to your questions during our Q and A session. The poll is open as of right now. Uh, while uh, John gets his computer set up. All right. Do you have me my screen over there? Uh, well, in one second. All right. When my screen get to come on, Ben. In two seconds. In two seconds. <laughs> All right. So. Dang. Your screen way on. My screen didn't even come on. Why my screen keep turning, Ben? Because <laughs> your screen is on now. Everybody okay. can see you on now. All right. <laughs> so we had everybody vote. Uh, most of the people, oh, we had 73% of people say they use YouTube, uh, Facebook uh, at 53%, and then 33% said they use Snapchat, TikTok, or other. Uh, and then 75% of, uh, of our audience voted. So. All right. All right. Well, um, 
Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Marshall Jones, and I am the national spokesperson for Kappa League. And um, and what we're doing here is something pretty exciting. It's it's a big vision, um, but it's the beginning of something amazing, and we're really excited to have you be a part of it. We've established Kappa League TV, as you can see on your screen, and Kappa League TV is going to be the uh, the historical library of Kappa League online from here on. So your stories that you're going to tell are going to live for the rest of your lives um, and for everybody behind you. It's like a living piece of history. So on Kappa League TV, the big idea here is that you are going to become our news correspondents in your community and that every chapter is going to be responsible to do four news segments that they post on Kappa League TV, like real news on real TV. And um, with enough of those segments, if we then get every chapter uh, subscribed to Kappa League TV, and then get every Kappa Leaguer subscribed to Kappa, to Kappa League TV, before too long, we'll have 10,000 subscribers. And those 10,000 subscribers will give us access to YouTube's $53 million studio in Playa del Rey, California. So all we have to do is sign up uh, to get that happening. But what we're gonna do is you're going to learn today how to tell these stories. So every uh, news segment has certain things that you have to do to make it look like it's really news. And the great part is that we got a real news producer who was an executive producer for over 10 years doing the news in Atlanta. So everything you hear today is a real professional training system like you would get after you were out of college. So you're this far ahead of everybody you know that might want to uh, have some experience with this because you're getting what they're not going to get till after they're out of college. Um, and we believe in a few things. We believe that this is going to go on every year for the rest of Kappa League. This isn't something that's just starting once. This is from now on. And we believe that in this group of people that start here with us and learn how to do the news reports the right way, that somebody's going to be the next Lester Holt, that somebody's going to be the next um, uh, Trevor Noah, that somebody's going to be the next big star in newscast television, and they're going to come right out of Kappa League, and we really hope it's you. EC? All righty. Let me pull up my screen right quick. How's and, everyone uh, doing? You guys, this is uh, Mr. Connor. And uh, Mr. Connor has produced the news on a professional level uh, for more than 10 years. And so once again, the stuff that you're about to get is stuff that other people don't get until after they get out of college. So listen up. Perfect. Hey, thank you for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. Just want to make sure everyone can see my first page. So you guys can see um, the page where it says how to report news segments, correct? Yeah, I can. Okay. All right. So once again, um, a pleasure to actually be with you guys tonight. Um, this is actually, um, ha I have two passions and um this combines both of them, and that's giving back to our youth as well as the field of news and communications. So as we mentioned before, I um, have extensive years of experience in the news segment, so won't get into that. Uh, we'll just jump right into it. So with that, no further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we want to initially talk about how to report news segments. And what is news? So news should be informative, entertaining, and educational. When we talk about informative, let me 
close the screen right here. That's just in front of me. Okay. All right. So when we talk about informative, we're talking about basically current events, newly received or noteworthy information, um, especially recent or important events, information that is not previously known by or to someone. And when we talk about entertaining, we talk about the fun, enjoyable, and pleasurable parts of news. Activity that holds one's attention and interest, or gives pleasure and delight. And moving on to educational, the third form of news is meant to enlighten. Its intent is to be about attaining and gaining ownership of knowledge and skills, um, something that will be buried in the back of your mind and something that you won't have to think about in the future. And let's talk about the responsibilities of a news segment. Okay, so when it comes to putting together a news segment report, there are several, several people involved. The first is the assignment editor, and then the producer, the director, and the reporter, which is known as talent. Now, the assignment editor basically serves as the heartbeat of the newsroom. That's the person who locates and finds the interesting and good stories, whether it's through research, contacts, word of mouth, etc. And that person works very closely with the executive producer, the producers, and sometimes even the um, director uh, and the talent, depending on the um, situation. The producer facilitates and oversees news content the production and flow um, example given how the show and the segment should look overall and works closely with the executive producers, the assignment editors, and the editors. Moving on to the director. The director is actually responsible for working closely with the producer and brings the producer's vision to life. So as you can see, while you may actually just see the talent, whether it's the, the reporter or the anchor, there are a lot of people behind the scenes, behind the scenes that are actually making this all happen. So there are, there's a lot of brainstorming, a lot of um, back and forth meetings, a lot of talk, a lot of conversations that happen in order to actually produce a new segment. It just doesn't happen by one or two people. It's not just the reporter and the cameraman is a lot of folks who are behind the scenes that actually make that segment come to life and fruition um, and more about the director they also help when it comes to managing everything from the camera positioning framing to lighting and audio so they are involved with a lot of moving parts let's talk about the news story structure so when you're doing a actual news story um, you want there to be a short intro, which is actually known as a code open, and we're going to get more into that on the next slide, but just didn't want to give you too much on this actual first slide. Uh, but the short intro is usually five to ten seconds, and it's known as a, what's known as a code open or a tease. So if you've maybe seen um, news segments, if, for example, today was the big election day. So there may have been some audio, some music, and a voice that actually talked over the, uh, the video um, about, okay, uh, Democrats won these elections. And as we know, the Democrats uh, took over the House today. And then the um, Republicans, um, they were able to help hang on and help hang on to the um, seats in the Senate. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about a code open and a tease. A package, a package is actually the story put together as a whole. So when you talk about the actual story in itself and it explains the events and why it's important. And as I said, on the next slide, we'll go more into that. Um, when you're doing your actual interviews, you want these interviews to be short, concise interviews that go within the package. And when I say short and concise, these interviews are usually um, 10 to 15 seconds long. 
when it comes to news because um, you, you're limited in your, in your time and you want to get your point across. And as we know, um, as the, the longer you go, the attention span starts to wane. Okay, so here we are talking about the actual news structure. So when we're doing our capital A TV segments, we want the total running time to be 90 seconds. And this is what I said more, with getting more into the actual specifics. So zero to five seconds should be the intro art with the Capital League logo and music. Um, and then we, it goes without saying that there should be any profanity um, within these news reports or any part of our segments. The five to 20 second hash, we're gonna focus on the reporter's introduction. And that's when you introduce yourself, your location, and Capital League TV. For example, I'm Eric Connor reporting from the campus of UCLA here in Los Angeles for Capital League TV. So that would be a good example of how you would introduce yourself. At 20 to 30 seconds, you want to explain the event and why it's important. And that goes back to the first slide when I mentioned, I talked about what is news. Well, you want to make sure that what you're reporting on is compelling, interesting, uh, current, as well as entertaining. So you could capture that person and the audience's attention. You don't want to just go out and do a story just for the sake of doing it and it's not compelling. Um, and that's what happens in news every day. You have a discussion and you brainstorm about, okay, what's important, what information needs to be um, put out there. And at the, at the same time, how can we uh, keep one's attention? Um, and then when it comes to that, the actual real news business, that translates into um, money and actual advertisers because the more eyeballs you have on your segment, um, the more you can garner in terms of advertisers. Okay, at the 30 to 80 second segment, that's where we're gonna talk about the interviews. Now, I would like to see multiple interviews as opposed to one interview, because when you do multiple interviews, it gives your story more balance, more credibility, and you can see both sides of the story. Um, and it actually just makes it more compelling as opposed to, you know, seeing the same person over and over. If you were actually going out, um, I, I know our Kappa Leaguers recently went to go visit a um, some of the um, folks who live in nursing homes. Um, that's an example of if you had gone out to that and done a story on the actual visit to the nursing home, you would talk to uh, multiple people there, whether it's people who actually live at the nursing home, folks who care for them or actual uh, family members who actually come out and visit. So that would be an example of not just interviewing one person, but interviewing multiple people to actually make your, um, your story compelling. Okay, and wrapping up this slide at the 80 to 90 second segment, that's when you're gonna do your reporter wrap up. And just like you did at the introduction, you're basically, Going to give your name, your location, and uh, segue out with Capital League TV once again. So the intro and the wrap up are somewhat of the same, um, and it's just establishing on where you are and that you're reporting for Capital League TV. Okay, so the actual news story, and we just want to make sure that there's an understanding that should be a minute and 30 seconds or approximately a minute and 30 seconds, right at that minute and 30 second um, mark. That's what we want to shoot for. It should include B-roll and um, B-roll may sound like a foreign name to you, but basically B-roll is just video. That's the um, actual um, just television news talk. When we talk about B-roll, it's just the video that you actually show. Um, A-roll, um, the next line when I'm talking about a, a, at least one interview, but preferably more. 
So the actual interview, that would be considered A roll. So there's A roll, the interview, and B roll, the video. Uh, but emphasizing once again that you should preferably have two or more interviews. But um, if that's not possible, you want to have at least one interview. It shouldn't just be um, the uh, reporter or the talent talking. Um, and that moves over to the next line of the reporter voiceover. So the reporter vo voiceover is when you actually are talking over the video and it's a recorded track um, and you're actually explaining um, the importance of why you're doing this story and why you're at the uh, particular location. Okay, let's get into some of the production and the production value and importance of that um, the number one thing is lighting a lot of time this is kind of disregarded in, in terms of production value uh, but lighting is very important um, lighting should always complement the reporter or the talent um, light should um, lights or natural lighting should be to the front of the reporter not the rear and a good rule of thumb I went on ahead and highlighted here was just to imagine yourself when you, you take a picture with your cell phone. If the sun or light is behind the person, they appear dark or washed out um, because there's the light or the sun is overpowering them. So the light should actually shine on the, um, the subject and shine, shine on the talent in order to light them. Um, and you also want to think about uh, when it comes to us, you know, as African Americans, we we come in all kind of different colors, you know, whether we're fair skin, dark skin, medium tones, um, and things of that nature. So you want to take that into consideration because you wouldn't put someone who's dark in the same lighting as someone who is fair skin because that person who is fair skin would be washed out because it would be too much light. So if you're in natural lighting, you want to find a location um, where it complements you or complements your talent um, and gives them a, a better look. And if you're inside, um, the same thing in, in terms of artificial lighting, make sure that the light is correctly shining on that person or um, they're in a, a um, correctly lit area. OK, let's talk about framing. When it comes to our segments, we want to make sure that we shoot from the waist up, from the waist up. Um, so basically, when we're saying from the waist up is basically right above the, um, the belt line. Um, and that does many things. Um, one of the first things it does is it actually brings you, it brings you closer to the camera and it actually brings you more to life. Farther you are away from the camera, of course, the harder it is for one to see you, but it takes away from you and your actual reporting um, when you're actually. Oh, sure. Hello? Uh, yes, I think we're having a little bit of auto difficulty with uh, Eric's. Uh... All right. So, but well, listen, let me let me step back in here for a second, man. Okay. Because um, there are uh, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about um, during your when you're putting your piece together. Um, Ninety seconds is a framework, not an exact. So if it comes in a little less a little bit more, that's all right. The main thing we want is for your segments to have a flow that you're happy with and to keep all of the segments short enough so that people want to see another one because you know they're interesting and it's you. And um, once you start to post your segments, you'll also start posting the link around on your social media. And so that way your friends can see the segments that you put together and see you on camera um, or your work as a news person. Um, but in that segment, though, when we're putting together the, uh, the, uh, 
the interview part inside the package, um, let's keep it to three interviews or less. So if you can get three interviews in that are about 15 seconds apiece, then that's great. And trust me, it sounds like a small amount of time, but um, if you go and watch any of the entertainment news shows like uh, Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood, generally the interviews there are 15 second segments or less. And so you can go and look at that and you can actually see what 15 seconds feels like. 15 seconds uh, can give a lot of information. Do we have Eric back yet? I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Lost the connection. I don't know what happened. I, I, I heard background noise when I would think I was talking about sound. Is that where you guys lost me? Uh, yes. We're, you were talking about, you had just finished framing, I believe. Okay. Perfect. Okay. For some reason, I lost connection. Uh, it went silent. Okay. So, um, sorry about that. So, let's get back to um, sound. and. In terms of sound, uh, I was mentioning before I lost connection is that I want to make sure that there is no background noise. Um, background noise takes away and eliminates uh, what you're trying to get across in, in terms of your news report. Uh, so, for, for example, background noise could be you're out doing a story and you're near a construction site. Um, that construction site can be very distracting um, if there's some kind of drilling going on, or if you're, for example, here in LA, where I'm actually near the airport. Um, so that could be distracting. So what you wanna do is make sure that your actual audio is strictly focused on you and not on the, um, the actual background noise that is coming through, okay? Okay. Attire. So when it comes to attire, it, it, this goes without saying, it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, we want to make sure that you're in capitally formal. Um, don't want to have you out in a t-shirt, um, out in jeans. Um, not only is that not professional, but it's distracting. Um, as you see in actual real newscasts and other real segments, I think I'm um, um, we were just talking about Access Hollywood. If you look at the talent and the reporters that are on those shows, you can see that they're dressed in um, formal wear um, in, in terms of, you know, they have a shirt and tie on um, and they, they look a professional. Um, they're not out in jeans and, and, and T-shirts. So uh, that goes without saying that, you know, you need to, you need to present yourself in a professional, professional manner. And I believe that is it. Yeah, that is the last slide. I didn't want to create too many slides. I wanted to make sure that we had enough time for, um, for questions um, so we can answer those, um, but I will hand it back over. And let me um, real quickly just uh, throw in a couple of other things. Um, when you're trying to decide on the lighting or the location to tell your story, try some different things and look through the camera. So, you know, generally it's a little more difficult on the talent if you're in the direct sunlight. So you want to try and find a place that is bright, but also has a little bit of shade or diffusion of light so that that direct sunlight isn't hitting your subject. And the same thing with direct overhead light. So try some different places, you know, try it over on this side of the hallway, on the other side of the hallway, back in the doorway, see what the different kinds of light do to your shop. And exactly. also, uh, if you're having any, if you're using your cell phone and you're not getting the kind of sound you want, they have something called a lavalier microphone that you can get from Best Buy and you can get them for like $20. They're not expensive, but um, that will give you uh, probably a better quality of sound. And especially if you can find one that uh, that only focuses on the subject, not on all the sound around you, 
then when you're doing your outdoor shots, you could also use a lavalier there. Um, and you, go ahead, Eric. And you're exactly right, Brother Jones. I was going to um, just piggyback on that as well because I was kind of thinking that when I was talking about the um, just going through this segment. Um, also, when it comes to the actual sun, and you were mentioning um, some of the act going into the different um, areas, you can also buy what is known as a um, a reflective screen, and that reflective screen can help when it comes to directional um, lighting, when it comes to directional um, um, natural lighting outside in terms of reflecting light on or off your subject or your talent, your reporter. Okay. Sounds good. Um, well, listen, before we go right into the Q&A, Ben, can I play them a sample of what we're doing on Kappa League TV? Ben? Yes, yes. I'm going to launch a, I'm gonna launch a poll real quick, All right. uh, and then we'll switch to that. Um, so the poll that you guys see up there right now is uh, how often are you on social social media? Uh, zero to two hours a day, three to five hours a day, or six or more hours a day. So what do you think is going to be the, the, the uh, highest uh, percent on that one? <laughs> three to five hours a day. <laughs> six or more. You think six or more? I don't think six or more. Think I, I, I think, think everyone's going to tell the truth. I think people are not going to tell the truth. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't think everyone's going to tell the truth. <laughs> right, six yeah. or more, man. <laughs> so, so it's kind of interesting because as, as I look through the attendees, I see a lot, a lot of names that look like they're adult names. So, oh, for real. So, adults, if you're sitting with with uh, young ones, uh, capital leaguers. Please make sure that they uh, they also answer so you guys can tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Zero uh, to two, 50, 60 yeah. percent. Exactly. Please. Please. <laughs> yeah, you see it right there. All right, Brother Jones, you can show your screen. <laughs> All right, here we go. And um, so for those of you uh, that have been here, this is kind of a sample of what we're talking about. It's a little more dressed up, um, just can't because I have yet, sir. Huh? We can't see your screen yet, yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. You gotta hit the button. I gotta hit the button where it says show? Yes, sir. There we go. There we go. Okay, all right. So this is a sample news piece. You'll notice there is an intro, a package, and an outro. Um, you'll also notice that uh, uh, it captures different interviews, uh, but we do it in a, um, a short segment. Um, and so, and it's a little bit more creative than your normal newscast, but we don't mind if you guys are creative when you do this. We want you to have fun with it too. So here you go. Oh, I think it's buffering. You probably have to buffer a little bit. <coughs> okay. So what I would do, Brother Jones, I would take it back to the beginning. All right. It just looks like it's buffering. Let's do that. All right. Uh, can the... you also make sure that uh, the sound is on your computer? Because uh, you weren't getting any sound? You weren't getting any sound. Right. Oh, okay, let's see. Oh. Okay. So, let's see. Now, can you hear me? We can, can hear, hear you. you. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's try this. Hi, I'm John Marshall Jones. There it is. And I'm here with the... 
Hi, I'm John Marshall Jones, and I'm here with the Kappa League at the first ever Kappa League convention in Concord, North Carolina. I'm Judge Kevin Ross of America's Court with Judge Ross. If your young man is not a member of Kappa League, uh, you are missing an opportunity of a lifetime. So there you go. Right. Um, and so that's, a, you know, it feels like a lot went on, but it's actually a minute and 23 seconds. So um, if we can get in and tell our stories and be entertaining and engaging and concise and put a little bit of heart into it, um, this is going to be a video historical document that will last for the rest of time. And, um, and we're excited about what the potential is to do this with you guys. Now, this is this is very awesome uh, in everything that you guys have presented. Um, we want to remind our audience that uh, if they have any questions, they can just type their questions in the question box um, so that we can uh, respond to the to respond to your questions. Uh, we do happen to have um, a question right now. Uh, just for clarification, what do we want to consider formal? Uh, the pol uh, the polo shirt. Or um, if the, if we're not able to wear a uh, button-down shirt, um, is a, is that uh, the appropriate attire? Um, well, what we would like to see is uh, as soon as I get back to my uh, my screen here. Okay, uh, let's go back over here to the header on Kappa League TV. Um, if you look at the header here, something along these lines, you know, um, maybe you guys have jackets, maybe you have sweater vests, but that Kappa League bow tie just tells a story. And we'd like to take that bow tie and make it that when anybody sees that bow tie anywhere across the country, they know that you're those guys from Kappa League. So we want you to wear that bow tie. Okay. Um, is there a special program that you use to actually do your video editing? And uh, will we be going over how to do that uh, in the future? Um, I use um, the same program, uh, iMovie, um, but I use it on my, uh, both my computer and my phone. However, um, we're not going to go over that today, but um, Ben, I'm open to uh, to doing an iMovie segment um, at a future time. And okay. To, and to piggyback on that, um, so iMovie is accessible to to everyone. I mean, that is pretty standard, so there shouldn't be any issue with that. Um, I, because of what I do in public relations uh, for the military and government, I use Premiere Pro, which is a part of the Adobe suite. Um, so that could be, along with iMovie, something that I could get them familiar with because it's actually uh, Premiere Pro 
is actually using uh, today's newsroom. So I definitely want to get them familiar with them. Well, why don't we um, why don't we do this? Let's you and I talk about doing another one of these where we do a segment on iMovie and then a segment on Premiere Pro so they can learn how to do the thing that they can have on their computer at home, but then they can also learn how to do what they're doing in real newsrooms. Perfect. Works for me. Um, so, Ben, I think that's our next one. Okay. Um, here's a question. Uh, where or to whom are chapters to submit the recorded news clips? Okay. So, um, the chapter is going to uh, up, and they're going to establish their own YouTube page. So if you don't have a YouTube page yet, um, then your chapter has to put up a YouTube page. And then your chapter will post on its own YouTube page. And what we're going to do uh, at Capital League TV is we're going to subscribe to your page as soon as you put it up. And so when you post something on your page, we'll get an announcement on our page that one of our subscribers has posted and we'll begin a playlist just for your chapter. And ultimately, when anybody from around the country comes to, to Kappa League TV, they can look up your chapter and see what you're doing. That sounds good. Um, we have uh, our uh, national uh, guy right director, our brother Burnett, uh, on the line. If he'd like to say anything, uh, he has he has the ability to have the floor now. Um, the question that we do have is, how would you handle news segments during an actual event? How do you sure. manage sound? How do you what is what do you think so, they mean by how would you handle it during? So, right. Up. So during an event. So you mentioned uh, the LA uh, Capital League is going to the uh, nursing home. So mm -hmm. that's during a, an actual event, and uh -huh. there's sound going on in the background, right? So we all know, you know, those of us that visited nursing homes, uh, we've seen, uh, you know. The nurses are moving around. There could be a stat call. Something could happen. So, how do you manage the sound at, at that point? So, um, that great question, first of all. Um, and I didn't get into all the details, uh, but that's a, a perfect example. So, in that example, you would actually there's always it's always good to have more than less. So, in that situation, you want to make sure that you are shooting more video than you think you need, shooting more audio uh, than you think you need, and getting more interviews than you think you need. So that way, you always have uh, more to choose from because it's bound to happen where there's going to be background noise, you're, you're not going to have audio. As we've seen tonight, you, there's going to be technical difficulties sometime. Um, so you always want to make sure you have more than enough. Um, and say that, also, when I was talking about background noise, you don't want to have noise that is distracting background noise. There is something called natural sound that is used in news segments. Um, for, for example, um, once again, if you're out at the airport doing a story and you're talking about a plane taking off, you actually want to have that sound of the plane taking off is you know you're saying a delta airlines jet took off today you hear the noise that is what's called natural sound so there are times when you want to incorporate what is called natural sound in there um as opposed to um uh, as opposed to a distracting background noise so if they were at a nursing home and actually uh, doing a story on how um, the um, caretakers are, are taking care of the um, folks who live at the nursing home and they're answering the phone or they're opening their door. That is actually that sound that can be incorporated in the actual story uh, that's not distracting. Uh, so we talk about background noise. 
if they were actually sitting there conducting an interview and the phone was ringing or someone is dropping a chair, um, you would want to move away from that sound and, and take them to a uh, quieter area. Um, and also, and those are all really, really good things. Um, one thing that you can do is while it's loudest in that public area, that's when you shoot your B-roll. So you get all of the, um, the things that are causing noise are the things you can focus your B-roll in on. You know, the, the loudest people, the, the uh, loud truck going by. They usually make, uh, it's usually kind of animated. And so it makes great B-roll because you're not going to necessarily use the sound from the B-roll just the picture, right? And then uh, you try and take your subject into a place that's a little quieter and more well lit. And if you have a lavalier, that can be very helpful in that situation because you can just clip it onto their shirt and you're only going to be so far away because you're doing an interview. So um, that's probably how you would handle, at least to handle the sound there. Um, and outside, um, you would probably um, want to stay a little closer to the camera um, or, you know, within the, uh, the reach of your lavalier as well. Um, but the best way to ensure better sound is to have a lavalier. Exactly, exactly. The lavalier is it's, it's a it's a sound saver you know it's the one you clip on your lapel or your collar and is is meant to be basically a single directional in, in terms of picking up audio you have other um you have yep you pull it up and on the screen that's a lava there right there so that's the one you will see the news anchors wearing um as opposed to what we call the stick mic when you see a reporter out in the field and they're holding this stick what looks like a ice cream cone in front of their face um, with the um, the windscreen on it. Um, so the lavalier um, prevents a lot of that uh, background noise because it's single directional as opposed to the omnidirectional. Omnidirectional picks up all sound and surrounding sound. So, what do who does who do chapters contact once their YouTube channel has been established? Uh, okay, so um, once your channel has been established, uh, the first thing you'll do is come over and hit this button here and subscribe to Capital A TV, and um, and that will, and then we can go and look at who has subscribed to us. So that would be right here under channels. I believe. Please don't embarrass me. Yes. So you can see right here, we've got all these different Kappa League channels that have already subscribed. So if you have a Kappa League channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please come and subscribe. And if you don't have a Kappa League channel, then we need for you to uh, put up your own uh, YouTube channel with the name of your city and then Kappa League after it. So uh, like these GSO Kappa League, Central Mississippi Kappa League, RPAC Kappa League. Um, and then that will, uh, and then we'll know from there that you're up and we'll reach out and subscribe back to you. Sounds good. Um... So when we, we look at videos, and we, we'll probably have to get into this the next time, uh, one of our next segments, but, um, you know, one of the things that's big out there is hashtags and putting tags on videos. So uh, should should we be doing that when we're uh, uploading videos? Uh, yes, you should. Um, and let me see. Right, Brother Burnett, are you on the line? He's on mute right now. Yes, I'm off. I'm on the line, and uh, you had a question for me. 
Well, we're just gonna, they were asking about um, hashtags, and I was just wondering which were the hashtags that you prefer. So the, the hashtags, and uh, I will, uh, let's put it this way, I will send those out because I'm, uh, I'm drawing a blank on them right now, to be honest with you. I know we've used uh, a hashtag uh, uh, of I am achievement. We use hashtag YCAP as mentor. We're going to continue to use those. We're also going to use hashtag uh, 95 years of guide right. Those are the three that we're going to be using for sure this year. Okay. But particularly for our, for our capital leaguers, uh, Hashtag I am achievement is one that uh, that we definitely want to use. All right, all right. Uh, and I also wanted to again thank our presenters. Uh, you know, I hope everybody knows this is a major initiative for us this year in positive video reporting. Uh, besides uh, subscribing on Capital League TV to our main. Uh, Kappa League TV channel. We're also asking you to send videos into our uh, National Guide Rights social media. Uh, you can send it in to, I think it's content at National Kappa League, uh, I believe it's uh, .org, but uh, uh, you should have that out. If not, I'll send that out again. All right. All right. And we'll also, um, like I said, we'll send you uh, an updated um, list of hashtags um so that you guys can know so that we can all be hashtagging the same thing so the answer is yes there is and uh let's get a list of who was on this call and we'll send them out all right sounds good uh man that was a good question i was like i'm like over here where are my hashtags where are my hashtags <laughs> yeah, that was a great question yeah, that was a great uh, question so once again, we want to thank you guys uh, for uh, coming on uh, this evening. Is that it? Is it over? Almost. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it goes really fast. So we have one more poll that we actually want to send out. Um, so the poll, the poll is out. Um, do you display positive images on your social media? Uh, yes, no, sometimes, or not applicable. And not applicable is, you know, I really don't use, I do a lot of stuff on social media. So we'll give, give people a little bit of time to answer that. Uh, we do want to thank our presenters, uh, John Marshall Jones and Eric Connor, for coming on this evening to present this wonderful content. Uh, just know that we will have more in this series on social media. We'll be talking about how to uh, upload your video, how to edit your video. So I think one of the things that we talked about was doing iMovie. We'll also probably talk about how you do a B-roll. Um, we're also going to have another presenter come on and talk about how do you do presentation skills uh, to help you out there. Uh, so we'll have more in this series. Uh, we'll be looking forward to doing uh, more with uh, social media because we want to make sure that we're always displaying a positive image, uh, especially from from a capital league perspective. All right. I um, want to throw in here. I have some hashtags. Hashtag capital league. Hashtag mentors. Hashtag my brother's keeper. Uh, and uh, Brother Burnett, how do you feel about hashtag fraternity? Uh, I think we're going to stay away from that one. Okay, we'll stay away from that one. So hashtag capital league, hashtag mentor, hashtag my brother's keeper. Um, and, and then we'll have some more for you, but we'll figure out seven or eight that'll really drive the most traffic and bring home the message. Perfect. So once again, we want to thank you for joining the Diamonds in the Rough uh, webinar series. Please remember these webinars are brought to you by the WK Kellogg Foundation and the Kappa Foundation.
Uh, we will have some new webinars coming up within the next several months. And we thank you again for joining. We, as I said again, we want to thank uh, John Marshall Jones and Eric Connor for uh, this wonderful presentation. And we will be in contact with more things. If you'd like to view, re review a recording of this, uh, please look out for an email. The email will show you the recording so that you can review this later. Uh, for those uh, Capital League programs that uh, did not have enough people who registered uh, at this time, please remember that you can always come back and review the recording and share it with your Capital Leaguers and your chapters. Uh, once again, we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar series. Thank you and have a good evening.